Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and Baldur's Gate. Today I have a little discussion for you though, to do with Baldur's Gate 3, also the future of its creator Larian. Baldur's Gate 3 has been nominated for Game of the Year, which on December 7th hopefully it will win at the Game Awards. To say the least, it's worthy of the nomination, and personally I'd love for it to win because it's where I'm going to be voting. But despite that fact, there is common criticism for say Act 3, that final section of the game claims that it was a bit unfinished and shorter than expected. A lot of people were pretty disappointed with the fact that all that build up we only got to go to the lower city for example. So it's fair to say it's one of the best games I've ever played, an absolute triumph and I think it earns game of the year. But it's also not a perfect game and clearly it doesn't need to be. Having said that, there could be more for the game in the future, like other content updates that address those types of criticisms. Or even better, proper DLC even a full expansion one day maybe. Outside of Baldur's Gate, what is next for Larry in Big Picture after such a huge success? Well, today we're going to talk all about that, so let's just begin. We'll start with a quick highlight of the insane success of the game, which has been acknowledged en masse just recently. Look at this, this is the founder and CEO Sven Vink holding an absolute pile of trophies and awards for Baldur's Gate. At the recent Golden Joystick Awards, Larian enjoyed the awards for Best Storytelling, Visual Design, Studio of the Year, Best Game Community, Best Supporting Performer in the form of Neil Newborn and his incredible Asterion. It also won PC Game of the Year, and Ultimate Game of the Year, absolutely insane achievements, a complete clean sweep. But they seem to be far from done carrying home awards. With the upcoming Game Awards on the December 7th, they've been nominated for the most categories joined with Alan Wake 2. Like I said, it has my vote for the game of the year, but what a year it's been for gaming in general. Something that's also been lovely to see outside of the game is how the cast have been getting together, particularly the actors for Shadowheart and Lazel. They've been together at IRL quite a lot, but there's been a lot of different streams of the game. The actors for Asteria and Lazel and Shadowheart, they've all been at it on Twitch with serious success as individual streamers. Then you've got the awesome events and meetups like the recent Comic-Con panel and the awesome High Rollers D&D session. So live post release for the game and the community around it has been incredible and it's far from done. The game had huge success with its PC release obviously then a second wave of hype with the release of the PlayStation version. Then we've got the Xbox release coming up soon and apparently that's on track for a December release. Larian's plan is to make the announcement of its exact release time at the Game Awards, so at very least they're going to have some stage presence outside of the awards they might win. So it's been a massive ongoing success story, but it's also not the perfect game. A lot of people are still criticizing Act 3 as the weakest part of the game, the part that did seem the most unfinished or even cut short. It is undeniable that its initial version had a lot of gameplay issues. There were bugs and breaks that have actually been slowly addressed every major patch, alongside many little hotfixes. I think they've been doing a great job with updating the game and addressing exploits alongside the problems found in that later section. It's just, it was obviously noticeable for a lot of people that a lot of the issues came up in Act 3 where Act 1 and 2 were much smoother fleshed out experiences. And there's been a lot of discussion around cut content, seeming plans for Act 3 that just never came to fruition. Alongside issues to do with, say, the companion storylines, how they felt a bit strangely side questy rather than main eventy in Act 1 and 2. Some characters have like nothing going on in Act 3, and then there's the few that have the bigger moments, but it feels so separate from the main events, like it's a total side adventure not tied into the main story. Personally, I understand that we had things like Jahira and Minx being unlocked very late in the game, but that also meant you got to enjoy them for what was the shortest section of the game. So like I said, there's clearly things you can criticize and that's fine, it's still a fantastic game, but there are things we'd like to see updated and improved over time even now. And the thing is, they've been steadily doing that. But what's next for the game content-wise? Well, something seems to be coming to the game and it'll likely be announced at the Game Awards alongside any other new content they have planned with the Xbox release. What we're talking about first though is Honor Mode, which was found as a new achievement added with the last patch, which is an extremely hard challenge. It was added to the GOG version of the game and requires beating the main story in that Honor Mode. It sounds like a new difficulty setting beyond Tactician. Honor Mode in Divinity Original Sin, their last game, basically forces you to one save slot, which means no save scumming. But even more brutal than that is if you and your party die, that is it. The save file would then be deleted and you'd lose it all. Since this Baldur's Gate 3 version is using the literal same name and we're talking about the same devs, 
it's a good chance it's going to be the same mode or maybe very similar anyway but it is something players are calling for a harder mode for the game and that is what they could deliver with honor mode my money is that this is going to drop with the xbox release and we're going to hear more about it at the game awards but for actual new content there's obviously massive room and potential for a post game dlc or a full-on expansion to introduce something totally different and it's not like there aren't hints of new content of this nature potentially it was a couple months back now that all six of the actors for the origin companions and the narrator were brought together. Sven Vink actually mentioned near that time that he was really looking forward to calling back the voice actors and then that happened. There's any number of reasons why they might come together for content, but something tells me it wasn't so they could record something that they're making right now. It could very well have been a meeting to talk about future plans and if they'd sign on for whatever it is. After all, the way that the game was made, it wasn't like all of them were in a room together doing the scenes together. It was quite separately done. So to me, it suggests they're planning what's next, and that does involve the origin characters and of course the narrator. However, it was also true that they came together to do that awesome D&D shot, the one they did with Hyrule, Rollers, it was just timed a bit suspiciously after Sven made that tweet not long before it happened. Still, it's fair to say a lot of people agree that simply adding more content to a game as popular as Baldur's Gate 3, well, it makes sense. And it's something they can reasonably charge for and they'd be smart to. With how they completely went against microtransactions, meaning there was no in-game shop or paid cosmetics and all that horrible stuff that we experience as normal at this point. So a lot of people have a lot of good faith in wanting to give them more money in exchange for basic basically anything good. Something they could do to achieve that then, that would make a lot of people happy, would be a game master mode. Something that gives the player the ability to create their own stories using the assets in game currently. Divinity Original Sin released its own game master mode, letting players do exactly that. The thing is, it's a very complicated concept just because of the sheer amount of options and potential that spawns from that. But essentially, it's giving the players the tools within the game right now to say, spawn an NPC, give him a name, give him dialogue, give him a quest, write the details of that, give it a reward like golden XP. There'd be no voice acting, but you could do all that. You could create an area using current models, set enemy health, damage, attack options, and so on. It's kind of leaning into a D&D DM role, and while very complicated to set up, very unique and very cool. The awesome things people might create with that, that they could maybe go on to upload and have other players try. It would basically create new content for the game from the player base. And with how they've literally done the form of that before, maybe we could see it in Baldur's Gate 3. But if we did get a proper paid update, what would that mean for the game generally? Well, potentially it would mean a higher level cap, maybe up to 16 or even 20 like D&D, but balancing for that seems very hard. In fact, Larian talked about how crafting a game around a party of four level 20 characters was a problem. I think they'd need to make a real increase to enemy difficulty to make it possible, like more health and DPS, sure, but new mechanics and smart AI, well, there's a lot they could potentially do but it does seem hard to do. With that new content though, you'd expect new locations within the Forgotten Realms. Waterdeep is referenced in the game a lot, and it's just north of the Sword Coast, so that could be an option. Or, closer to home, an actual upper city of Baldur's Gate, that'd be great too. One easy win would be simply adding new races and classes to the current game. There are mods that currently attempt to do that, but one of the most popular class requests is the Artificer, the Masters of Invention. They use arcane spells called infusions to imbue objects with magical power, often focused on buffing, healing, protecting their allies. But it's that concept that's tied to items, weapons and armor that they create and then use. Another easier thing to add would be more companion options too. There's that popular tiefling bard we imagined could have been a dedicated companion, or other characters like the popular Damon, that blacksmith. But outside of that speculation, I also mentioned Larian's next project and future in the introduction. This comes up because, well, we know they're already working on the next game. It started with an interview about two months ago around the release of the PlayStation 5 version. That was during an interview with Todd Kenrek for the D&D YouTube channel. Vinked claimed within that interview that he's already, quote, busy on the next game. For him specifically, he talked about how a different team will continue to work on patches and other updates for Baldur's Gate 3, but the creative path, as he called it, is done officially for him specifically. So Vinked is certainly done with Baldur's Gate 3 in that way and seems to be preparing whatever is next for them. And very recently, in regards to the many nominations they've had from the Game Awards, Vinked also tweeted this. This is a real honor, especially in a year with so many releases. Seeing our little niche RPG make such waves is very motivating. I wish I could tell you about our next big game, but this is really encouraging to us to ensure that it pushes 
many boundaries. I'm very excited about it. So at very least, we know there's going to be a new Larian game based on all that. They're already working on it, and it's going to apparently push some boundaries. Despite that, we do know that its scale won't be as big as Baldur's Gate 3, whatever the game is. Back around the release of the game on PC, Vink actually had an interview with Bloomberg. Near the end of that interview, he talked about the big hype and love they've experienced around the game. At that time, he said they weren't certain on what they're going to work on next, but stated that the next game will be smaller in scale. Further, he talked about how he hopes Larian could work on multiple games at once, rather than say one massive title at a time. He brought up during that interview that he doesn't want it to take another six years to develop their next game. So it is interesting to look back on that. Around August, he stated they aren't certain what their next game will be. Then, about two months ago, they said they're already working on the next game. And then another confirmation of that with the tweet in regards to the Game Awards. So they've obviously made some kind of choice and it is underway. It's extremely likely to be a new RPG, very Larian style. A lot of people expect it to be a new Divinity Original Sin game, but the studio does have options now to do whatever it wants. And with the success of Baldur's Gate 3, surely they'll have a bigger budget to work with. It's true that Divinity was nowhere near as popular as Baldur's Gate, which has been a bit of a standout success. But you know, personally, I've got a pile of friends who've started playing Divinity Original Sin 2 now after experiencing Baldur's Gate 3 and wanting more. And I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people. So. I imagine the interest in an up-to-date new Divinity game would be big, but whatever Larian's next release is going to be, it's probably going to be a while before we see it. There was that six-year gap between the last releases, right? But as we've talked about, they aim for it to not be as long as that this time. At best, we can hope for a new game from them within five years, but hopefully sooner. But there you have it. That's my little talk about all things Larian and Baldur's Gate currently. With the lead up to the Game Awards coming and their clear plan to make some announcements and reveals at that event, what do you think we're going to hear about? And what do you think Larian's next game will be? I'm interested to see what people are thinking about that. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye